Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of things I wish I knew before doing a PhD. If you missed part one yesterday, I will link that in the description for you. Um, but for now, let's continue with some PhD wisdom. So when I was applying for my PhD and also when I started my PhD, I thought a PhD takes three years. And I'm in the UK system, by the way, so um, I know in other countries it can be longer than this as you take classes and have exams before you start writing your thesis. Um, but in the UK, all you do is go straight to writing your thesis. So PhD in the UK is generally talked about as taking three years. And if you get funding for it, this is often for three years. So mine was funded for three years and um, obviously I aimed to finish it around the time that the money was running out. So yeah, I thought it would take three years. And guys, it does not take three years. <laughs> it takes longer. So I submitted my thesis after three years and four months. And I did get an extension on my funding due to COVID. So this kind of went to plan of I wanted to submit my thesis around the time that my funding ran out and I managed to do that. So that bit was great. But then no one really told me how long the bit after you submit your thesis takes. So after you submit your thesis, your examiners then have three months to read it and um, or examine it before you have your Viva exam. And I'll get back to you um, what a Viva is later in the study. And then you wait for the initial examiner's report, which um, for me took, I think it was nine days. And this details any corrections that you need to make to pass. And your corrections, you'll either be given usually three months, six months or 12 months. And then once you submit those, your examiners have more time um, to approve your corrections, which for me, I think took about two and a half weeks. And then finally, you're actually finished. So your PhD ends up taking at least several months, even over a year in some cases, longer than you think it's going to if you think the end point is submitting your thesis. And this bit isn't as fun. Um, for me, firstly, because well, my funding didn't cover this time period. Um, so the living stipend that I was getting was no longer coming in, so that wasn't great. But also you sort of think once you submit your, your thesis, you get that feeling of being finished and you're like, yes, I'm done with it, that's great. Um, but you're not done with it, you've got months more to do and you kind of can't really move on to other things during this time. You're often just waiting for your examiners to tell you um, what more work you need to be doing on your thesis. So there's loads of time where you're kind of just waiting on your examiners and you don't know if you're going to have to do more work on your PhD. So you can't really commit to um, anything else to moving on and being finished and getting a job of all of, and all of that. So it's a bit of a weird time where you have nothing to do but you can't go do something else. And like I said, this can end up actually being a really long time period of several months um, that, yeah, makes your PhD take quite a bit longer than you might expect. Okay, so I know a minute ago I did just say that all you have to do for a PhD in the UK is write a thesis. And technically this is all that you have to do to get your PhD and to pass. But it's really unlikely that this is actually going to be all that you do during your time as a PhD student. Obviously, your thesis is going to be your top priority, but a lot of PhD students will be thinking about what they want to be doing once they finish their PhD and once they've run out of um, education and qualifications that they can do. So you'll also be working on things to build up your CV and make sure that you're actually employable once you're done. Having a PhD is great, but um, it's probably not going to be as much experience as you want to make you as employable as possible. 
So you're likely to take on other things um, during your time. So you, you might do teaching, um, you might give presentations on your research, you might organise a conference, write an article, do a placement, and all these things um, do end up taking time away from working on your thesis, um, which is why one of the things I mentioned in part one was the importance of time management. This is so, so important during your PhD, especially if you're doing all of these other activities. But all of these things give you a much greater experience during your PhD. Um, they will give you new skills, new experiences, give you networking opportunities, and these will all really help you um, be more employable at the end of it. So before I started doing my PhD, a few people told me it would be quite stressful. Um, but I was very much naively like, nah, I'll be fine. The nature of my research and what I was doing, <clears throat> there was kind of nothing that could go wrong. So I wasn't relying on any other people, I wasn't doing any experiments that could go wrong. So there was nothing in my research that I had planned that could cause me problems. And I was right about this part, my research was the best part of my PhD. It went smoothly, I loved it, it was great. Um, but then, then there were the other things that caused me stress that I kind of wasn't expecting before I started. So from near the start of my PhD and really the whole way through it, I was trying to work out what I was going to do once I finished. So before this, I'd um, always just gone to kind of the next stage of school. So I'd gone from high school to an undergrad degree, to a master's degree, to a PhD. Um, but now I'd got to the point where I'd kind of run out of school to do. So I knew that the next thing that I was going to have to do would be get a job and really just go and join the real world finally. And this was stressful because a PhD on its own, it shows you're very highly educated, um, but it doesn't necessarily give you the experience that you need to actually get a job. So I had to work out what other kind of work experience um, that I needed to have to be in a good position at the end of a PhD to have um, as many skills as possible to actually make me employable. So then I was doing all these other things alongside my thesis, such as I organised a conference, I organised a seminar series for two years, I was teaching, I was travelling around the country giving presentations, and the whole time I was so worried about whether this was going to be enough to actually get me a job when I finished my PhD. And it also didn't help that um, family and friends like to ask me what I was gonna do once I finished my PhD. Even when like I'd only just started and I still had several years to go on it. So a bit a bit of advice for anyone who knows a PhD student, don't ask them what they're gonna do next. Chances are they don't really know and it's already stressing them out enough without having to come up for another with another answer for it. But if you are a PhD student, um you're gonna get asked this anyway, so it's kind of a good idea to come up with a nice vague answer for this question and then change the topic quickly. <laughs> Another thing that caused me stress during my PhD was waiting on other people. I thought because of the nature of my research, it's very independent, this wouldn't actually be a problem for me, but I still did end up waiting on people. So this included um, waiting for feedback from my supervisor, um, which wasn't usually a problem as I'd usually have like another chapter of my thesis to work on um, while I was waiting. So for example, while my supervisor was reading and writing feedback on chapter one, I would then be working on chapter two, so I always had something to do. But then towards the end, when I was waiting on feedback on the full draft of my thesis, when I was nearly finished, this was the point at which, when it was with my supervisors, I couldn't really make any progress and there wasn't really anything I could do. But I was so nearly finished that I needed my supervisors just to, to tell me like a few little tweaks or whether it was ready to submit yet. So having nothing to do while I was waiting for that was quite frustrating for me because I couldn't 
I was so close to being finished but I couldn't make any more progress until somebody else had got back to me. So this was, um, yeah, this was reasonably stressful wait and waiting for that. I also then had the same thing while waiting for feedback from my examiners, um, waiting for my viva and then waiting for feedback about corrections uh, after that. I basically spent about six months of 2022 just waiting for someone to tell me whether my thesis was good enough to submit and then good enough to pass or to tell me whether I need to make more corrections to it. Now I have to say it is completely understandable that reading a hundred thousand word thesis takes time so I didn't like begrudge waiting on someone to give me feedback for it. I know it's going to take them some time to do. But it meant that I kept going through alternating phases where I was really intensely busy working on my thesis and then I was doing nothing at all while I was just waiting for someone. And then being so close to the end I was really ready to move on, especially during the stages where I wasn't working my thesis and I essentially had nothing to do. But because I didn't know if I was going to get feedback that said I needed to make more corrections and do more work, I couldn't really commit to doing anything else. I couldn't actually move on and like start a full-time job or anything because I didn't know if I was going to have to dedicate a whole bunch more time to my PhD. So at this stage the waiting did become quite uh, stressful and a bit frustrating because I really didn't like I was ready to move on with my life and I really didn't know if I could or if I couldn't and if I was still needing to work on my PhD. And these were the sort of the main things that caused me stress during my PhD that I kind of wasn't really expecting um, to be uh, problems. I mentioned um, time management in part one of this video and this really did help me to kind of manage the stress um, from doing um, lots of things other than my thesis. So I wasn't particularly optimistic. Um, so let's talk about a more <laughs> enjoyable part. Uh, the end of your PhD. So when I say the end of your PhD, there are actually um, quite a lot of end points that kind of just become one long drawn out process of finishing your PhD. So the first real kind of end point is when you submit your thesis for examination. There's kind of many end points before this, like when you finish your first full draft, um, for example, but this is kind of the first end point where you think like I'm I'm done, I'm finished. It was a bit of a weird one because I don't know if other unis do this differently but I essentially just sort of emailed someone um, so it didn't really feel very uh, like formal, like a formal submission process um, which was, was a bit odd <laughs> but it was still really great to get it submitted and gone and there's just so much relief and joy at actually you know kind of having it done having your thesis fully written and submitted so after you submit your thesis your examiners get a period of time to read it for me this was three months and then you have your viva exam so this is where you meet with your examiners it's usually an internal examiner and an external examiner and you have the chance to answer questions on your thesis and to discuss it with them and to defend it. If you want to know more about this, I did talk about it in my video on finishing my PhD, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, um, but I will link that video in the description if anyone wants to know a bit more about um, the Viva in general. But essentially this is the point where you pass your PhD subject to corrections. So basically they tell you that you will pass, but once you've edited your thesis in the way that they, they tell you to. So this is end point number two, when you've had your kind of final exam and you know you're gonna pass, but you still have more work to do. And then end point number three is when you complete your corrections and you resubmit your thesis to your examiners. And um, again, this was just, emailing someone so it still didn't really feel very official. But this is kind of the point where you're done in the sense that you won't be doing any more work on your thesis 
you can't be given any more corrections at this point um so whether you pass or fail after this and you should be passing because your examiners have told you exactly what you need to do to pass so as long as you follow their, their instructions you will pass but essentially whatever happens you're you're done you won't be making any more edits to your thesis and you won't be doing any more work on it a couple of weeks later, you then get informed that your corrections have been accepted and that you've passed your PhD. This is a, a slightly more official and formal looking email actually. I then had to upload my thesis to the university's library thesis repository and then my thesis is made available on that once I graduate, um, which hasn't happened at the time that I'm filming this, but um, yeah, what will now happen for me in like three two two days time so by the time i actually publish this video will have happened so i will put a link in the description to where my phd thesis is available uh, in case any of you guys are interested in super niche areas of ancient egyptian linguistics or are just kind of curious as to what my phd thesis looks like so once you've uploaded your thesis to the library thesis repository this is when you've met all of the requirements to be awarded your PhD and to graduate. Um, so this is like the end end of your, your PhD. You're kind of done with, with all of the work parts. And then you just have to graduate, um, which is the easy bit really. Um, and this is when you get, um, you can officially use the title of doctor and this is sort of the final end of your PhD. So there are sort of five end points um, at least to your PhD and I think it's really important to celebrate each one and to celebrate what you've achieved really because each one is in itself um, an, a new achievement of submitting your PhD, of successfully defending your PhD and of doing the corrections to your PhD. So it's really important to just recognise what you've actually achieved. So this is kind of twofold. Um, firstly, your research is going to be in a very niche area that there's going to be very few people who actually understand what you're doing in any kind of detail. Um, but this is actually a really good opportunity to learn the skill of being able to describe your research to non-specialists which is a really useful skill to be able to have. But the main thing that I really want to get out here is that unless they've done a PhD themselves, your family and friends and people you know outside of academia are not really going to know how it works and what it is that you actually do. A PhD is a really weird kind of qualification because you spend at least sort of three or four years writing just one thing and then you either pass or you don't. That's kind of all there is to it. But that makes it really hard when you're just catching up with someone and they ask you how your PhD is going. So I would catch up with family and friends and they'd ask me how my PhD is going. And all I could say was just, I'm still not finished. That's kind of all the information there is. But they would be looking for more information like I pass some exams or I'm getting a certain grade like a first or a 2-1 um, but a PhD just doesn't work like that and that's something that a lot of people just don't know because they just don't have experience of it. And then even when I finished and I told people that I passed my PhD um, I had friends asking me what result I got and I had to tell well well none I just got a PhD that's that's kind of it I don't get a, a grade that I can tell you and then also like when I had my viva I passed with corrections which is completely normal I think pretty much everybody gets um, some level of corrections from the viva but then I told people this and I had someone ask me if I was disappointed um, which I wasn't and then I just had to explain to them that just because I got corrections this isn't this isn't a bad thing um this is a completely normal result and I am happy with it but to someone who's not doing a PhD 
um, this might seem like it's actually not a good result and that maybe it is a bad thing. And then it's not just results. I think kind of the whole way through doing my PhD, I'm not really sure that my family and friends understood that this actually had the same level of commitment as like a full-time job. People were just kind of here, oh, you're a student, so you just go to a couple of lectures and then have loads of time off, which I definitely wish was true. Um, but a PhD is a huge commitment, um, a huge time commitment. And I'm not really sure that my family necessarily realized that until I ended up working from home and I actually saw how much work I, I actually did. So I've mentioned quite a few <laughs> negative things about a PhD um, in this part. So I just want to add one positive thing is that a PhD is incredibly rewarding. My PhD thesis is 357 pages long and I wrote every single one of them myself and that's something that I'm very proud of. The feeling of doing your own research, designing your own project and then just doing everything yourself is a really rewarding experience and it's something that you can just be incredibly proud of once you've done. It's a massive achievement to to do a PhD and to finish a PhD and it's a really great feeling to have achieved that. So that's about it for the things that I wish I knew before doing a PhD. Um, if you enjoyed this video give it a like and I will see you guys in my next one.